Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutali Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani Namaste Saraswati Deve Guravani Pacharni Nirvisesha Sundarvati Paska Chade Satani Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adoita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gobhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Narada Muni has been describing the various symptoms of the various ashrams and varnas and now in this 13th chapter he describes the Paramahansa stage of sannyas. Well, he describes sannyas in all its stages, but especially Paramahansa. As a historical example of this, learned sages recite the story of an ancient discussion between Prahlad Maharaj and a great saintly person who was feeding himself like a python. Seeing the saintly person to be quite fat, Prahlad Maharaj said, My dear sir, you undergo no endeavor to earn your livelihood, but you have a stout body exactly like a materialistic enjoyer. I know that if one is very rich and has nothing to do, he becomes extremely fat by eating and sleeping and performing no work. Hearing Prahlad choir like this, the saintly person answered him, O best of the Asuras, Prahlad Maharaj, you are recognized by advanced and civilized men. You are aware you are aware of the different stages of life because of your inherent transcendental eyes with which you can see a man's character and thus know clearly the results of accepting and rejection of things as they are. A pure devotee such as Prahlad Maharaj can understand the minds of others because of his pure vision in devotional service. Brahmana said, my dear king, although you know everything, you have posed some questions which I shall try to answer according to what I have learned by hearing from authorities. This is an important point because one cannot give knowledge to others without having heard from authorities. Real knowledge is not a matter of mental speculation or empiric research. It is a matter of hearing from authorities. A newborn child accepts his mother and father as his authority, and this is proper. When he first begins to speak, he says, what is this? What is that? And by hearing from mother or father, this is such and such, this is a watch, this is a telephone, this is a computer. He can also repeat knowledge. When the child says, this is a watch, he's speaking on authority, which is correct. Then the learned Brahmana went on to speak to Prahlad Maharaj and said, in the course of the evolutionary process, which is caused by fruit of activities due to undesirable material sense gratification, I have received this human form of life, which can lead to the heavenly planets, to liberation, to the lower species, or to rebirth among human beings. Here we have a description of the real process of evolution. The real process of evolution was not described by Darwin because Darwin only described evolution in one direction, 
But evolution can go in more than one direction. In this verse, it says that in the human form of life, according to one's fruit of activities, he may either go up or go down or remain in the same level. The saintly Brahmana then said, in this human form of life, a man and woman unite for sensual pleasure of sex. But by actual experience, we have observed that none of them are happy. Therefore, seeing the contrary results, I have stopped taking part in materialistic activities. The ordinary person is under the illusion that if I can just get this and this and this, I'll be happy. But by actual experience, we can see that those countries in the world that have the most of this and this and this are not the most happy. Happiness is not a matter of having this or that. Verse 27. Brahmana goes on to say, the actual form of life for the living entities in, is one of spiritual happiness, which is real happiness. This happiness can be achieved only when one stops all materialistic activities. Material sense enjoyment is simply imagination. Considering this subject matter, I have ceased from all material activities and, and am lying down here. The Brahmana goes on to say, the living entity tries to achieve happiness and rid himself of the causes of distress. But because the various bodies of the living entities are under the full control of material nature, all his plans in different bodies, one after another, are ultimately baffled. The fact is that we are all destined to receive so much happiness and so much distress in our present body. And no one can increase it or decrease it. It is simply an illusion of maya that makes us think, if I get this and this, or if I was there, or if I had this position, I'd be so happy. 31. The Brahmana goes on to say, materialistic activities are always mixed with three kinds of miserable conditions. Adhyatmika, Adhibhautika, and Adhibhautika. Therefore, even if one achieves some success by performing such activities, what is the benefit of this success? Despite the so-called success you have achieved, you are still subjected to birth, old age, disease, and the reactions of your fruit of activities. 32. <clears throat> the Brahmana continued, I am actually seeing how a rich man, who is a victim of his senses, is very greedy to accumulate wealth and therefore suffers from insomnia due to fear from all sides, despite his wealth and opulence. Those who are considered materially powerful and rich are always, under, are always full of anxieties because of governmental laws, thieves and rogues, enemies, family members, animals, birds, persons seeking charity, the inevitable time factor, and even their own selves. Thus, they are always afraid. The Brahmana then says that he has found two important teachers. One is the bee, and the other is the python. 35. The bee and the python are two excellent spiritual masters who give us exemplary instruction regarding how to be satisfied by collecting only a little and how to stay in one place and not move. As you have heard several, 
have heard several times from me, I have put this important teaching into the little formula of thank you, Krishna, for now as it is. How do I use now as it is in the best way for your service and pleasure, Lord? What is the difference between material activities and spiritual activities? The difference is for whose enjoyment you're working. Any activity done for Krishna's satisfaction, even fighting on a war field like Arjuna did, is spiritual. And any activity done for your own enjoyment, your own satisfaction, even going to the temple, is material. Krishna says, all that you do, do as a sacrifice for me. So not only do we say, thank you, Krishna, for now as it is, we say, how do I use now as it is in the best way for your service and pleasure, Lord? I'm willing to do whatever you want, confident you have a perfect plan for me, and I'll be patient to understand and persevere. Thank you very much.